We call it the canoe stand. Every one of the members of the Grinnell tribe is allowed one tree. And it took me three months. I went and walked in the woods for three months. And I kept coming back to this tree, the same tree. This is the tree that I made my canoe out of. So it was a beautiful tree, but it was about 200 feet high when it hit the ground. It was approximately eight feet over my head. I couldn't touch the top of the log. It was eight feet over the top of my head. It was quite a huge tree. It split in the middle. This canoe um, is the small half of the tree. The bigger half of the tree, I'm still waiting to use. I'm gonna make a bigger canoe. Uh, it's a dugout. Uh, I dug it out all by myself. Uh, the process uh, is to use the uh, homemade chisels and to chip it out. But nowadays, uh, we use modern tools. Uh, I kind of fudged a little bit, I used the chainsaw. Once I got into town, I took the challenge on and started. And from beginning to end, it took me four years. This canoe will get retired this year. Actually, this canoe should have went to my grandson. Grandpa, that canoe should have been mine. I said, I know. I said, I'm going to make you a bigger, better one. So, I'll make my grandson a big ocean canoe. It's helped our community in a lot of ways. Uh, this particular shed that I kind of built for my son and the community is my canoe shed. This canoe here my son built, this is uh, his ocean canoe. Really surprised how many young, young people, young men have come to the shed now and started carving. It's amazing. Uh, and I know all of a sudden I see totem poles being carved in my shed. And, uh, paddles and canoes. Uh, so this lumber you see behind you here is uh, all uh, yellow cedar from Alaska. We had uh, special logs brought in and uh, had them brought into planks uh, and then we'll make these uh, into ocean canoes. Gives you an idea what yellow cedar looks like here. This bit is made by yellow cedar. It was so interesting to find out that once I got this building put up and uh, uh, how all the young kids in the village just seemed to flock here and uh, they just start carving and amazed me uh, the talent that come out here so far. I'll show you one of the totems that have one of them that started. What is the significance of the orca? Oh, that's the, our killer whale. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a very strong spiritual animal. How about the bald eagle? Another very, very strong spiritual animal. My family has the, the wolf that's our family crest, double-headed wolf, and different families have different uh, totems as their, their family crest. Uh, that's the eagle on the top. Mm -hmm. These are my uh, family crest. Uh. Oh, I've got something else that I'd like to show you here too. Okay. This eagle was presented to me by the Washington Fish and Game Department. If you put your name in as a Native American to the regional fishing game department, 12 years later I got a phone call in the morning, woke me up and uh, the fishing game department uh, called me and said I had a eagle being sent to me. Said, wow, I couldn't believe it. I said, okay. 
So I ran up to the post office. Sure enough, my eagle came in. I finally got my eagle. Everywhere I go, of course, I get quite a bit of attention when I bring my eagle staff out. It's quite a piece of art, I think. I love my eagle staff.